How's it going guys, it's Kevin. Today I'll be going through some of the important aspects of um, lifting equipment and this is another part of the deadlift tutorial series and the equipment that you lift with is especially important with the deadlift um, because of how the weight reacts when you pretty much interact with it uh, from the beginning of the lift and how that changes throughout the lift. And you might notice this a bit on squats and less noticeably on bench with the squat and the bench, although the squat does have a specialty bar for squatting the 25 kilo, it's less important in my opinion, especially on bench, because when you come down with bench, unless you're benching upwards of 220, 260 kilos, the bar won't kind of react as much when you come up and down with it. With a squat, you may experience what's called a speed wobble, where the bar, where the bar might kind of uh, flex when you come down with the weight because of the sheer amount of weight or the velocity that you're going at. But for the deadlift, you are producing an extreme amount of force off the ground. How that bar reacts to you applying that force is going to differ depending on how long it is, how thin it is, and what plates you're using. And my general recommendation varies. So depending on how you're lifting and what you're lifting, it's going to change the dynamic of the lift. So let's say you're deadlifting 60 kilos. So the 20 kilo plate on each side and 20 kilo bar, deadlift bar, um, Elenco stiff bar, it doesn't change anything at all because there's not enough weight to bend the bar, therefore the entire lift remains somewhat neutral throughout all types of equipment. Where it can differ a little bit is with the deadlift bars, they're slightly thinner and that allows you to get a better grip on the bar if you have small hands. Um, I think girls in particular have um, less issues with deadlift bars because they can get a firm grip around it rather than um, a regular Olympic bar which is what a, an Alico IPF approved bar is usually spec to. Deadlift bars are generally longer, so as I said, how much you're lifting is important as well. And there's another layer to that, um, which I'll get to later. So when you're deadlifting with a deadlift bar, it's called a deadlift bar because um, it's a bit longer than a conventional um, Olympic bar and what happens is, is when you start pulling the bar, because it's still made of steel, it will um, generally bend the same amount depending if it's the same thickness or the same length. So when you stretch out metals or when you have longer pieces of metal and when they're thinner, they generally bend and the ability to retain that shape is dependent on the quality of metal. And with deadlift bars, it makes it a little bit easier because it cuts a bit of range of motion throughout the entire lift because when it starts to bend, the entire weight hasn't left the floor and therefore you can manage more weight off the ground and midway through the lift. So it's easy off the ground and progressively gets harder Whereas when you lift with stiff bar, it's hard throughout the entire lift. So you'll, you'll be handling the full weight at the bottom of the lift as you would be at the top of the lift. And that's why um, range of motion is important because that's a, how much work is involved with the lift. With the deadlift bar, um, I would say that you wouldn't be doing as much work as you would be with the stiff bar. Not taking anything away from people deadlift with deadlift bars, I do, but that's just the facts. So, is it that simple? Is it that easy? Um, that's not the only thing that you can should be considering. Um, like I said, how long the bar is is important as well, and what what's placed on the ends of the bar, weights, right? And the more plates you put further out on the bar, um, the more the bar tends to bend depending on how much 
weight is at, at and how far it is on the end. So obviously, if you're pulling with extremely thin plates and the cent all, all that weight isn't distributed to the tips of the bar, it will bend less than if you have bumper plates with the same amount of weight um, brought out to the ends of the bar. So my recommendation is always um, during your off seasons and when you're training just to get stronger, train on equipment which makes you comfortable, well, which you are comfortable with lifting. That varies from person to person. For me, um, at the moment, I'm kind of restricted to steel plates. So for me, I'm restricted to um, an Oki style deadlift bar, um, two, uh, four bumpers, and the rest are cast iron plates. Cast iron plates, when you apply a lot of velocity into the start of the lift or acceleration, um, it can ding up your joints and your muscles, and um, it's very unforgiving sometimes. So I went back into Doherty's and I felt a lot more comfortable lifting with bumper plates. And I, and I have deadlifted with bumper plates for a very long time to get stronger and I can do so consistently because it's easier on my body and my body can recover from it faster. So, moving on, the next point to address is what type of deadlift bar to lift on. And it goes back to how far the plates are distributed to the end of, ends of the bar. And there are two types of deadlift bars. There's the Oki bar, uh, Oki deadlift bar, and there's the um, Texas deadlift bar. Texas deadlift bar distributes plates further on the ends of the bar, barbell. I'm calling them barbell, just know that I'm referring to the barbell. Um, so when the plates are distributed more to the ends of the bar, it's gonna flex a bit more and whip a bit more. And this comes down to lifting style and how you, um, I guess, initiate the deadlift and what you feel more comfortable with doing. With my lifting style, I prefer a semi-stiff um, bar. So the one at Durham at gym is a power bar, but it has a little bit of flex in it. So it's not as stiff as a complete stiff bar. What I'm lifting on at the moment, which I PB'd on, is an Oki bar and it has thinner collars so I can essentially lift on a deadlift bar but not have as much whip as a Texas deadlift bar. Back to the point that I was trying to make, if you pull fast off the ground, you're more likely to pull better on an Oki bar because when you pull on an extremely bendy bar like the Texas deadlift bar and you pull with extreme explosiveness, what, what's going to happen is when you start yanking on the bar, the slack of the bar is going to catch and what that does is when the bar bends, it pulsates a wave to the ends of the bar and if at that point you've managed to get all the plates off the ground, it's going to flick the ends up because that force travels as a wave and it will flick the ends up a little bit and that's where that speed wobble comes from and what happens there is it can throw you off your lift and you'll kind of get displaced um, laterally. So from the side, you might be tipped forward or tipped back. You don't know because um, there's so many variables within a deadlift that can happen and that can make or break your lift or could even injure you. So that's um, an important point to be making. And for myself, with the deadlift bar, with the Oki deadlift bar, pulling with speed is a non-issue. There's a bit of um, wobble in it. However, I get the, you can get the benefit of using a deadlift bar, so it cuts a little bit of the range of motion of the ground. And it's not as unforgiving as a stiff bar. So that's kind of my... Um, science. Not, not, not even science, it's just, it's just common, common sense, but like um, kind of compressed into a video, so you guys can get like a holistic idea of um, selecting your equipment and knowing what to be using because it's important. Training consistently is the most important thing in gaining strength. And if you're lifting on equipment, which fucking makes it daunting for you, so if you, 
say for myself, yeah, I, I've actually trained for a long, like I used to train for a long time, primarily on elite equipment, and I did uh, make some good progress. However, approaching an Alico bar with Alico plates, you can, you can be a little bit hesitant in throwing yourself into a lift because it's literally hitting a brick wall if you pull ex extremely explosive off the ground. And um, that, that mental doubt when you're trying to go in the gym and smash it every time is going to cost you. It's going to cost you um, some valuable progress. So. Fuck what people say about lifting with bumpers, lifting with that. Do what is going to make you improve, right? And that's kind of my two cents on equipment. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, if you enjoyed that, hit the like button for me and I can produce more tip videos. I've got fucking a lot to say with the deadlifts, but you know, can't do it without fucking 500 likes, right? <laughs> but yeah, hit, hit the notification bell down below and leave a comment, questions, scientific, um, about physics if you, if you like. I can answer them in a more um, scientific manner if you require. But th that's the general idea so that anyone can understand.